So we're going to talk about two source interference, and this is a very interesting pattern. So usually what you do, you first you need two coherent sources, like so, and uh, usually how we produce two coherent sources is we start off with one source like this, we diffract it through one slit first, okay, and then the waves of course will spread to these two slits over here, and that's how you get two coherent sources, right? The best way to create two coherent sources is to make sure that they come from just one source. So um, we're going to now study how a two-source interference pattern works. So what's going to happen here, right in the middle, over here, notice that these two path lengths are exactly the same. And so what's going to happen, remember that if you have two path lengths that are exactly the same, then the path difference right here, okay, would be zero, which means you get a constructive interference. Now, as you start to move either way, so here or here, what you're going to realize is something quite interesting. Let's just choose any point, let's say here. You will notice that this path length is a little bit longer than this path length. And I could go on and do this some more, right? As I move further, these path lengths get more and more or get larger and larger in terms of their difference. And so as you start to move away from the center, the path difference starts to increase gradually. And so you'll reach some point, let's say here, where your path difference will be exactly equal to half a wavelength. And uh, this will be symmetrical on both sides. And so this creates your destructive interferences and also what we call the first order minimum. And then you move up some more, you'll reach a point where the path length is 1 lambda, and then you form a maximum again. So you get CIs, and this is what we call the first order maximum. And you know this will go on for quite a bit. Okay, so I'll just do a little bit more over here, so you get a nice little picture of what's going on. Okay. All right, let's do some terminology. So this is the central maximum. These are your first order minimums, your first order maximums, your second order minimums, your second order maximums. And this is just going to go on and on and on. Now, uh, there is some good news. There is a nice way to uh, characterize this entire occurrence. And that is through this formula that you see over here. Now, delta x is defined as the separation between two adjacent maxima, or CI, but you will probably be able to see that this can also be the separation between two consecutive destructive interferences. Right? And so it follows that these separations are uniform throughout. Okay, So delta x is characterized as the wavelength of your source times the distance d from the two coherent sources to the screen, and a what we call the slit separation. And this is a nice formula to know, but bear in mind that it uh, makes some very important assumptions that D must be much larger than A. Okay, you can only use this in such a, situ such a situation. If this condition is not fulfilled, you cannot use this equation. And then you will probably have to figure out your CIs and the Is by manually calculating the path differences and seeing how many wavelengths that is.